May I now give the floor to the next speaker, uh, Engineer Carollo, I believe. Um, Salvatore Carollo, who is uh, an, basically an oil trader. He has been with, with any uh, most of his uh, professional life. He was the oil trader, the, the, the responsible oil trader based mostly abroad in Amsterdam or London for the past 20 and more years. And um, he also can be defined as an oil man, yes, which is, which is quite, quite important. And among other things, he has written a book, which I think is uh, at the moment on the shelves in, in, in Beijing, and the, the, the Chinese are consulting it from time to time to see how, to, how to, to, to use your information for accessing the market. Salvatore, if you like, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Lauro, to invite me to this uh, conference. And uh, I'm going to try to talk about uh, the oil price. And I think it's very difficult to talk about this subject for two reasons. One, because the subject in itself is quite complex. And usually, when we say oil price, we mean a lot of things. So it's not clear what we mean. And the second is that we have a general attitude, which is like when we talk about football. We think we know everything. We can teach the coach of the national team. So having said that, I will try to give my point of view on that, hoping that I can cover a small niche of uh, maybe uncertain uh, you know, area. So we are going to talk about this graph, essentially. This is the subject. And uh, this is what we call price of oil. And uh, if you can see on top of the graph, there is also a name, brand. So we say brand, and we mean price of oil. Why? Does it make sense? So let's try to answer to this question. You know, this is the graph, the evolution of what we call price of oil. And you see, it's uh, like uh, something like a cardio, you know, <laughs> graph. So it's very, you know, unknown, very complex graph. It's difficult to explain what is happening. Especially if we combine this graph with the basic principle of the market. The price should be the result of the supply-demand balance. So if this is the graph representing the price, we should expect a similar graph of supply-demand, a crazy graph, where one month we have excess of oil, the other month shortage of oil, completely short of oil. Let's see this graph. So this is uh, the graph representing the supply-demand balance in the same period of time. If I don't tell you, if I didn't put there the legend explaining what is the green or the blue line, you wouldn't be able to understand what is the demand and what is the supply. Why? Because they are the same. So in the last 20, 30 years, the supply demand has been absolutely balanced. We don't know one single case, if you know, please tell me, of one producing country having obliged the refinery to take more crude than he wanted to buy. Or, on the other side, one refinery who was looking for crude, he wanted to buy paying the right price, and he was refused to have his cargo of oil. So it means we are in a market where who want to buy can buy, who want to sell can sell. And uh, believe me, I come from this industry. I don't know stupid refiners. So with this uncertain market, I don't know why people, refiners, should buy more crude than they need. 
because you know they don't want to engage money in keeping stuff, expensive stuff they've bought on storage and paying for the money. So they buy what they need at the very last moment. So supply and demand are balanced. The price is crazy. So you see, when we put together these two graphs, we do understand that there is no relationship at all between the physical market of oil and what we call price of oil. Because we call it price of oil, but what is it in reality? You know, some analysts say, no, it's not the supply demand, it's the evolution of the stocks that might change the price. And you see, this is the graph in the same period where you can see the stocks increase when the price increase. It should be the, the other way around. So also this relationship doesn't exist. So recently, when the price uh, was going down, most of the analysts said, oh, there have been an accumulation of stocks. Sorry, but sometimes it's difficult to fill the page of the newspapers. Because what does mean increase of stocks? In uh, the years uh, 79, 81, when we were scared about the beginning of the war, Iran-Iraq, the stocks increased by 130 days of forward consumption. So we passed from 50 to 108 days of uh, storage consumption. Today, we are talking about a couple of days, which is of the natural operation flexibility of the worldwide refinery system. And some marginal speculation of some traders combine the spe financial speculation with the physical movement. So very marginal things. So if we want to understand what we are talking about, we have to go a little bit uh, deeper. So what we mean by price of oil? What is the price of oil? Price of oil should be the number, the price at which we are able to buy a crude oil. Let's see what that means. Because if we don't are able to define this number, it means we are using a wrong model to define the price of oil. You know, let me make an example. If the price Nobel did exist in the old Greece, Euclides would have been, for sure, a Nobel Prize. <laughs> but you know, the uh, Euclidean, Euclidean geometry allow, allowed us to build whatever we have on the earth. The assumption was that the, the earth was flat. So the model did work for all the construction we made on the earth. But then happened, then we start looking at the stars, at the universe. And not only that, we wanted to go there. At that very moment, the Euclides geometry didn't work anymore. And we have to create a different model, the hyperbolic geometry. What is happening in the oil market is something similar. We used to talk about supply demand and OPEC, the bad guy. Saudi Arabia, they are doing everything. But at a certain moment, they went completely out of the game. So we have to look somewhere else. The game has become completely different. You know, when we define the price of a cargo of oil, a physical cargo of oil, the one that most of you transport, how we define the price? In the contract, in the oil contract, there is a, a benchmark, which is a published known number, and then a quantity which is the adjustment due to the specific quality of the oil. So until 1988, December 1988, what we call benchmark used to be the crude oil called Arabian Light. After that, the benchmark became Brent. You know, when we say Brent, 
it's not clear what we mean. Because brand, if you go to a dictionary, it means seven th different things, from the duck living in the Shetland Islands to something which has become the benchmark of crude oil market. But there are seven different things. So which one is the one we are looking for? What is the benchmark of crude oil? You know, we have reached this conclusion of having Brent as benchmark after a war between OPEC producing country and North Sea producer and the UK government. So eventually, in the city of London, there was the creation of uh, a new entity, which is not a crude oil. It took the name of the crude oil producing North Sea, but it's not the same thing. What is it? You see, when the Arabian light was the benchmark, if you wanted to buy a cargo of Arabian light, you have to pay the price of Arabian light. So if the price was $34 per barrel set by Saudi Arabia, you wanted a cargo of Arabian light, you paid $34, that's it. Today, if you want to buy a cargo of crude oil brand, you don't pay the price of brand. You have to pay what we call brand, plus of minus something else which means that what we call brand and we use as benchmark is not the price of the physical crude called brand. So what is it? Let's look at this graph. We have three lines. One is the dynamics of the physical transaction of crude oil worldwide. One is the transaction on the future market of the paper, contract paper. And the third one is the line representing what we call price of oil. If you see, the red line is the transaction of physical crude oil. It doesn't have any connection with the price of oil. The price of oil is linked to these, let's say, financial activities. But what does it mean? So we have uh, three different markets. That's why when we say, you know, price of oil or crude oil market, first of all, we have to agree on what we are talking about. So we have uh, the physical crude oil market. And once, I mean, before 1988, this physical market used to have a price because it was set by the open country. Since then, there is no pro price. So the physical market is not generating anymore a price. They take uh, the price, the crude, with reference to the other two markets. Then we have uh, the physical market of the crude oil called Brent and not C, which is the forward market. There are uh, a lot of transactions. By the end of the day, there is a physical cargo delivered. So it's still a combination between a lot of paperwork, but there is a physical card. But then there is the third market, which is pure financial market. What is traded on this market? It's a, a social game. Like figurine panine. Do you remember figurine panine? When we were child, we all played with figurine panine. So the genius... Uh, of the city of London together with Miss Thatcher. I think, I'm, unfortunately, you know, I think English people, they don't understand the genius of Mrs. Thatcher. They create a social game and they transform London in the capital of the oil market. They've invented the figurine panini of the barrels. So it's a market of the picture of the barrel. So you buy and sell pictures, not barrels, but you call barrels and you give to this picture the name of the crude. You call them crude uh, brand. So you go to this uh, giant supermarket and you buy one million of pictures. And they give you a piece of paper that you are owner of this picture. You go home 
and you say to your wife, you know, I bought this stuff. And she, she asks you, oh, say we can use this oil. We can, uh, you know, go to the pump station and have a free, no. <laughs> uh, can we have a, you know, a sample of oil? No, you are not entitled to have a one drop of oil. So what you can do with this paper, just bring back to the supermarket, hoping that the, the price of this picture, of this piece of paper, the next day will be higher. So it's a pure social game. But how big it is, this game? It has become the biggest financial business in the history of humanity since Adam and Eva. So the business, the daily business has reached $2,000 billion a day. So in one day, more than GDP, the Italian GDP. This is what we are talking about. So from this market, we derive the price of Brent dated, which then becomes the benchmark for all the crude oils in the world. So if this is the market, you have to explain me when the price goes up or down. Why we talk about Saudi Arabia? They have nothing to do with this market. They've done only one thing. They understood that the game is fruitful. So they put millions of dollars on the game and they start playing too. So if Saudi Arabia or other countries, they want to make money, what do they do? They buy picture and they announce that they are going to cut the production. People are going to buy pictures. They will wait a couple of days. The price will go up five, $10. They will sell and the price will go back. When the crisis started, we started to say, oh, Saudi Arabia was increasing production. Pure rubbish. We all know what they did. They changed the regional strategy. They want to be a regional power. So they withdraw from the market of the picture $200 billion and they let the price of the picture go down. So nothing to do with the physical production of oil just market of the picture. But let's go back to the graph. This graph here. What happened <coughs> when the price of oil dropped $110 per barrel in a couple of weeks? Why? So first of all, let's see why the price reached $150 per barrel. You know, there was the Christ of the subprime in the United States. So they spread the news, or the analysts, the, 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 you know, the study centers linked to the banks. You know, uh, Merrill Lynch, uh, Goldman Sachs, they started to spread the, the theory of the peak oil. And uh, from the beginning of, the, of 2007, 2008, they started to say, that during the summer there will be a dramatic shortage of oil. So people said, okay, let's buy pictures because the price is going to increase up to $300 per barrel. And the price in fact passed from 60 up to 147. What happened? Why the, 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 the uptrend stopped? Simply because Lehman Brothers failed before. So, when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, what happened? They had to sell all the pictures they've accumulated in the past month. And the price started to drop down. Then eventually all the other banks got rid of all the pictures. They sold, trying to get a lot of cash as, as fast as possible. And the price falled up to 37 in a couple of weeks. But Tell me one thing, all the investors who put the money in the market of the picture, this was real money. When the price dropped, what happened to this money? Physical, real money. It was a huge amount of money. As I told you, 2,000 billion a day is a huge amount of money. But all this money remained with a trading financial company who were selling this picture. 
And if you see where these companies are based, in a very nice location, Cayman, Bermuda, and so on and so on. So eventually what happened was the huge amount of money, of financial resources moved from democratic states to nowhere. So a huge, a huge world was created outside, out of the control of the democratic state, becoming the most powerful financial power ever existed in the earth. This is today the price of oil, the oil market. So please, <laughs> let's stay OPEC and Saudi Arabia in peace. Because the game is not in their hands. Just one consideration. All this game, what is causing, is destroying the real economy. Because in this context, it's not possible to plan the investment. It's not possible to, you know, picture our future. Upstream investments are there. The gas development cannot be developed. You know, we have a big environmental challenges. We should decrease the coal and increase the gas. But we have an important discovery. We cannot develop them because of the uncertainty of uh, the price of oil, the price of energy. The refinery system is dying. We are closing, shutting down the refinery in Europe. And very soon, we will not have uh, gasoline in our market. And the same phenomenon is happening in the United States. So very soon we are going to have a commercial war between the two sides of the Atlantic Sea in order to have availability of gas. Salvo, please come to the conclusion, please. Uh, so we are not investing, and this scenario is very dramatic. Just let me see. You see the price of gasoline. Somebody mentioned before the price of gasoline. The ratio between the price of gasoline and price of oil. We used to have, uh, this ratio was around 1.2, 1.4. Now we are talking about 1.92, so it's the double, because there is a shortage of gasoline worldwide. Last year, we had a shortage of 12 million tons of gasoline worldwide. So there are countries that are short of gasoline. So this is the picture. This will change completely also the business of uh, the shipping. Because this means that the trading route will change completely, and this means that the, the, the trading of finished product will become completely different uh, challenges. Thank you very much. Very good. As a, as, as a, fair, as a fair moderator, Apart that we are friends and colleagues, I cannot take sides, but this is the kind of uh, speech will, will, which will ignite discussion, debate. And maybe it's, it's, it's just by chance, maybe not, that the next speech will be focused on Saudi Arabia. Uh, while Dr. Drollas prepares, and I would like to say a couple of words about you, Dr. Drollas, let me give the floor for two minutes, just a flash to the lady, another lady journalist that also has been kept secret, uh, Azzurra Paches, who writes for the Staffetta Quotidiana, the equivalent of the Oil Grand Platz. Azzurra, would you like to offer, please, a very two minutes comment or question on what you have heard so far, please? Thank you very much, Francesco. Uh, good morning to anyone. Um, if 85% of physical oil trading is index to Brent, and Brent price is the result of financial speculation, the OPEC meetings are probably reduced to a pantomime, but from these meetings are born new geopolitical geometry that may affect future all routes. This is a good point to keep in our mind, uh, to guess what we can expect from this reapproachment between Russia and Ar Saudi Arabia. Um, the question is if uh, uh, Russia is a reliable partner for OPEC, uh, of course, and uh, I hope that Mrs. Drolla, Drollas can um, answer uh, to this question. Um, 
the other point uh, uh, is uh, that the trade-off between financial institutions and producer countries is changing, not only the routes of oil, but also the routes of petroleum products. For example, historical arbitrage of gasoline between US and Europe uh, are more difficult right now. Um, the, the point in this case is if uh, there is a real risk of a run out of gasoline in the US and Europe, and how to stem it. Thank you.